Hyperion Strings Elements just might be your next full yet intimate chamber string ensemble. This library is only $99 and Sound Iron is giving you a chamber orchestra of eight violins, six violas, five cellos, and four double basses. Now I got a chance to explore Hyperion Strings Elements before recording this video and I'm just blown away by how much they were actually able to fit into this one library. Not only are you gonna get a master patch for each individual instrument, but you're also gonna get a true legato patch and a full ensemble patch as well. So in today's video, we're gonna take a look at some of these string samples and really dive into the user interface. But before we do that, I just wanna give a huge thank you to Sound Iron for sponsoring this video and providing a copy of Hyperion Strings Elements so that I can review it and discuss it with you all today. Keep in mind that if you are interested in this chamber ensemble or really any of Sound Iron's other libraries, you can save 5% off of your purchase with my coupon code RRMUSIC. So I left a link for that in the description down below. Also, Sound Iron is currently running a 35% off site-wide sale from now until August 28th. So depending on when you're watching, just be sure to take advantage of that as well. All right, so after making the purchase and downloading the library, you'll be able to find it in contact and you'll see that we have a number of different patches that we can go through. So we have the ensemble master patch, violins, master and true legato, violas, master and legato, cellos, master legato, basses, master and legato. So I figured let's just start off with a legato violin patch. It's gonna load in at around under one gig. So one of the first things you'll notice about this interface is gonna be the swell knob at the top center. This is gonna be assigned to your modulation wheel. Then to the left, we're gonna have knobs for body, attack and offset. And over to the right, we'll have release, release volume and vibrato. And so before we go into just the legato articulation, Let's just take a listen to what it sounds like right out of the box. So the true legato patch is gonna come with a few different articulations. This first one is gonna be a fingered legato with vibrato turned on. If you were to go to the next one, you're gonna have a fingered legato clean, no vibrato. Then move on over, you're gonna have a gliss legato with vibrato turned on. And then the next dynamic legato is gliss clean, so no vibrato. Then they're gonna break down the articulations by different dynamic layers. So we'll start off with true legato piano, both fingered, and then the next one is gliss. Then we'll have mezzo piano, fingered and gliss, mezzo forte, fingered and gliss, and then forte, fingered and gliss. So this way you're gonna have a lot of control over each dynamic layer. So let's go back to the standard dynamic legato, and then we can easily turn off if we want it to be legato or not. The auto response can be turned on and off. If you want slow legato lines, then you play slowly, but if you want slurred runs, then you would play quickly. And with auto response turned on, you'll kind of see it shift according to how we play. And currently it's on solo mode, but you can duet your violin as well. And then blend is gonna start off on vibrato, but you do have the option to switch between clean or blend. Vibrato is just gonna give you obviously a vibrato sound. If we were to switch over to clean, that's gonna give us a very straightforward sound. And then if we go on over to blend, you'll be able to blend between the two. So right now with it all the way up, 
um, you'll get more vibrato, but if you bring it down, you'll get more of a clean sound. And I actually saw that Craig from Sound Iron mentioned that you could assign the blend to your mod wheel so that when you increase the modulation, you increase the vibrato as well. And then just moving on over to the right a little bit of the interface, we'll see that we can adjust the panning. So we wanna go left. That's center and right. Then you can adjust the velocity range and you have a key switch indicator as well. And so that is specifically the true legato patch, but let's check out the master patch as well. And so the main difference between this and the true legato is that the master is gonna give you access to a lot more articulations. So we can take a look at which ones are automatically assigned to the key switches down at the bottom, but we can also go to the edit menu and we can see which ones we want. And so we have a few different sustains, we have a few different shorts, um, different kinds of expressions, so like crescendo, decrescendo, as well as effects like colenio. And what really blows my mind is just how much control you're gonna have over these samples. And something that we'll go over is just that different articulations have a different set of settings that you can change. So for example, this is the sustained dynamic patch and it's gonna be similar to the legato that we saw with the true legato patch. So you could turn on the legato, you could you know, turn on auto response, you'll be able to solo or duet. You have the option to blend or keep it vibrato or clean. The tremolo patch is gonna be similar, but you're gonna stick with maybe just your response and then solo versus duet. But then if we were to go to a short sample like staccato, then the settings completely change. We're gonna have four different round robins to go through. And then you can reset it back to its initial state. You can turn on or off the velocity sensitivity. So right now, if I were to press softly, and then hard, but if you were to turn it off, you can adjust the velocity with your mod wheel. You also have style. So right now it's gonna start off on time, but you can adjust it to a tight play style. Or loose. So I think time is a nice mix between the two, depending on how you play. And then back to the center, we're gonna have a very similar layout with the panning, velocity range, and key switch indicator. So let's just hear a few of the articulations while we're on this main page. Uh, so tremolo was one of the ones that we saw. Uh, we saw staccato, but let's try maybe spiccato. That's a much shorter, crisper sound. Uh, pizzicato. We have Bartok pits. Uh, Colenio. And then what's really nice is that we're gonna have these swells and this is like a crescendo four count uh, piano to forte and that little setting control area changes again and it gives us a nice little like image of what the sound is gonna look like. I don't even have to touch the mod wheel for this, but. And what's nice about that is that even though it has a preset piano to forte, it's going to also be based on velocity. So that first time I played, it was very quiet, but then I hit it even harder and we got a more aggressive uh, crescendo. You also have the option of auto release. So if I were to... And then stop it mid forte, it'll stop, it'll auto release. but. You can also just do playthrough, and no matter when I stop, it'll play through.
which is really nice. And then you have the option of normal playback if you wanna sync it to your DAW, as well as a adjustable variable. And we'll see that with the decrescendo, with the sforzando, with the swell. So you are gonna have so much available for you just on the main page alone. And so right next to main, we'll see the effects tab. And right away, we're gonna see a blank preset dedicated to a filter, a compressor, and an equalizer. The filter is automatically turned off, but if we were to turn it on, just take a listen to the difference in sound. really, really different. It, you enter a more sound design stage of composing rather than just like string instruments, you know? And you could pick the different type of filter. So we have a few to choose from. Uh, let's go Legacy BP4. We can go to just a phaser. And let's try just vowel A. And you have the ability to adjust the cutoff and the resonance. Let's actually go back to legacy. And then if we were to look at the compressor and the equalizer, these are just gonna be kind of standard knobs. You know, you have your threshold, ratio, makeup gain. Uh, equalizer is broken down by low, mids, and highs. But what I really love is, let's say you don't know anything about, uh, you know, compression, equalization. Sound Iron is gonna give you a few different presets that you can choose from, just so you don't even have to think about adjusting or tweaking any of these knobs. We can go to uh, Gilded. We can pick uh, the ages. That one has the filter turned off. Overloader. Nice. Let's go to horned. really great. So this is also just great for somebody who doesn't really want to have to tweak, but just wants a predetermined sound already for them. Um, and there's plenty to choose from. And then the next tab is going to be our space tab. And so you might've noticed already that the strings of this library are a bit drier compared to some other string libraries out there. Like in general, wet libraries sound gorgeous right out of the box, but a lot of the time they're pretty difficult to control, especially in terms of the reverb. And a drier library like this one is just going to give a real clarity to our sound. And thanks to this space tab, we're gonna get a lot of control over that reverb. So right away, we're gonna see that we can choose the, to, one, to turn on, on and off the location of our reverb. So its initial state is cathedral close A. So try and listen to what the reverb is like right out of the box. It's still relatively dry, but we have a nice control over that. Um, we can choose cathedral, chamber, large room, hallway, uh, a bunch. Uh, let's go for FX long. It almost cuts down and then you hear the reverb. Let's go for maybe a hallway. Maybe a chamber? Let's 
So we really have a few different uh, locations to pick from, but we can also adjust the position of the instrument as well. So how close is it? How far is it? Uh, is it gonna be left, right, or center? So right now it's kind of in the middle, but we can bring it up close. You hear a lot more of the clarity in that, but if we were to bring it all the way back, Um, we can bring it left. And right. So it's nice that you have that kind of control, especially if you are um, maybe panning these out based on the positioning in an orchestra. So maybe your violins might be a little bit more left, maybe your viola's center, cellos and basses closer to the right. And then over on the right-hand side, we have basic controls, your, your high pass, low pass, how wet do you want the reverb and the size. So if we were to increase the wet, you really hear that chamber sound now. You can also go a little overboard with it. That makes it really bright. You can also change the low pass. Almost creates this haunting like echo sound. You can also adjust the size. Bring it all the way down. Versus all the way up. Really, really great. Um, and just like with the effects, it's also going to come with presets that you can choose from. So... Uh, you have the initial that it starts off on, but let's go to smooth and far. Really, really nice. I was going to say smooth, but that's in the title. The other one that stuck out to me was space. So, yep. FX long, it's gonna be roughly in the middle, but really wet, the size is all the way up. Um, so let's hear that. Wow, that is just, Incredible. This space tab is really just a second effects tab in itself. Um, so you have so much to work with, uh, which I'm really excited about. And then moving on over, we have the play assist tab. And I can really see this tab being perfect for somebody who might not be trained in music theory, doesn't really know too much about it, or just somebody who loves writing music, but has a basic understanding of a keyboard. So you don't have to know about basically the any of the black keys because you can just set it to whichever scale you want. Uh, you also have major, minor, major six, sus four, right, whole tone. So you would probably have to turn it on. Right now it's set to A major, and then you can see what each um, key is gonna be set to. So if you press a C, that's really gonna be a C sharp. D is D natural, E, E natural, F, F sharp. That way you can match it to the appropriate scale. And something to keep in mind is I did kind of lower the octave within contact. So that way I can see 
these yellow key switches are actually for the different scales that we have. So that was C major is assigned to D, D major is assigned to D sharp. But if you don't have it set down that octave, maybe yours looks something like this or even something like this, um, you might not see any of the key switches. If you bring it down one, you only get the articulation key switches. So if you bring it down two, then you can see which scales you have. But then something to keep in mind is that over on the right, you can assign these presets. Um, so let's just take a listen to what A major would sound like with play assist turned on. I start on the A. F major, same thing, just the B is flat. And something to keep in mind is that the black keys are turned off. So this is all based on the white keys. And then if we were to turn that off and go over to our final tab, which is arpeggio, it is automatically turned off. You can turn on velocity. Actually, let me go down to maybe spiccato. I turned on velocity. Interesting, so there's a lot to unpack here, but right now it has 32 steps. Um, maybe let's just bring it down to like 16 or something. Um, you can adjust the velocity by just clicking it or changing it up and down. You can adjust the rhythm by um, half note, you can quarter note, eighth, 16th. Uh, let's just go for eighth. You can also adjust the mode. It starts off with trill, uh, but you can go trill, arpeggio, run. Trill is the reason why it kind of alternates back and forth. The one I'm more interested in is arpeggio. And that half is a little too slow for me. Let's go back to eighth. And so because we turned on velocity, it is basing it off of the velocities that we set. We could also just turn it off and it's gonna be based on how hard you press. You can humanize your performance. And give it a little swing. You can also change the direction. So it's automatically going up. So C, E flat, and G, but we can go down. Um, there's a lot, honestly, to choose from. You can just do chords if you kind of want. Zigzag up. And you can adjust the range of your arpeggios. So right now it's on run, so, but you can also limit it to just two pitches, three, four, five, depending on how many you're actually pressing down. And you know, typically I don't use uh, really any arpeggios. I will typically input the notes myself, even uh, arpeggiator plugins, you know, like in Logic, I, I just don't typically go to them. But what's nice about this is one, it's just built into the string library. And two, you you might get rhythms that you wouldn't have thought about if you didn't turn it on in the first place. Down up, I guess.
Like, I wouldn't have really thought of something like that, especially like down, up, zigzag, move in and out. So there really is just so much to play with and get inspired by just with an arpeggiator. And now that we have a pretty good understanding of what this interface is gonna look like from arpeggio, play assist, space, effects, and main, there's a lot to look at, there's a lot to take in, but what's great is that once you have a solid understanding, this interface should be pretty much the same if you're using a violin, if you're using a viola, cello, or, you know, like the ensemble patch. Uh, so let's take a look at just violas. I kind of want like a sharper, just crisper sound. Really cool. Like this is just fantastic uh, for so many different reasons because you have so much control over your sound. And that was just the master. There is of course viola, legato. Um, you could go to cello, which I'm excited about. Let me turn on legato. Let's go bases. And remember, that's gonna be the sound of four double bases. So you're gonna get a real aggressive sound. Uh, Bartok Pitts, gotta do it. Wow. Whether you're using any of these instruments, you're gonna have the same kind of main tab. You can edit the articulations you want. You also have the main menu, which we didn't go over, but you can, you know, save articulations, load up articulations, and all of the tabs are gonna remain the same. So effects gonna be, you know, your filter, compressor, equalizer, your spaces, your reverb, your play assist if you need that, your arpeggiator. So once you have a handle of this interface, you have so much to work with. And of course, we can't move on without looking at the Ensemble Master Patch. And this is going to give you your full orchestra, which is fantastic. Um, if these are our key switches, let me just move up a... I guess, yeah, let's just go up so we have the full range. And what's kind of nice is that the colors are based off of the instrument itself. So if, you know, you get confused, uh, you can always refer back to this. And one thing that I did want to point out is that the ensemble patch is going to come with one more ensemble tab. And this is just gonna give you more control over what you want showing up on your keyboard. So this is gonna give you basses up to violas. You take out the cellos altogether. You could take out the violas altogether. And of course, there is gonna be some overlap between instruments, but you can adjust kind of where you want that overlap to be. 
Uh, so turn off the link. You can increase the range and you get a little bit of overlap here, or you can just link it and we increase the violas, decrease the range of the violins. Same thing with the viol with the violas and cellos. Let's unlink it. Let's increase the cellos just a little bit, and then we can link it again. And now we just decrease the violas. You can also adjust the volume of each instrument from here. So let's, and you can hear that change. Double bass, cello, viola, violin. but it's great that we have the entire ensemble as an option if you don't wanna write four individual lines. Overall, I think it's just so clear that Soundiron has made a string library that is really for everybody. Like this could be perfect for the absolute beginner or a seasoned composer. And we really see that in all of like the little details. And for just $99, we're gonna get a full chamber string ensemble that has a bunch of articulations and true legato patches. And then on top of that, we can add in more like sound design elements with that effects tab or the space tab. And I think I'm a really big fan of the user interface just because you have so much control at your fingertips. Like it might look like a lot to take in, especially if you are new to uh, sample libraries in general. But once you have a good understand of that, like Sound Iron is giving you a ton of control. It's just, super accessible, super easy to use. And I think that's what I ultimately look for in any sample library. And if you do want to check out Hyperion Strings Elements for yourself, don't forget that you can save 5% off of your purchase with the link in the description down below and using my coupon code RRMUSIC. So I'll see you over in the next video. And as always, happy composing.